Our first comprehension passage is going to be about bird migration. Let's move on to the passage. Migration is the regular movement of animals between their breeding grounds and the areas that they inhabit during the rest of the year. Many types of animals migrate, but bird migration in particular has fascinated observers for centuries. Migration is an excellent example of how nature has responded to the biological imperative for species to evolve and spread out into all possible ecological niches that can provide the conditions necessary for species to breed and raise young. The most common form of bird migration involves traveling to higher latitudes to breed during the warm season and then returning to lower latitudes during the non-breeding period. This form of migration allows birds to breed in areas that provide optimal conditions for nesting and feeding their young. Because of the way in which the continents are placed upon the earth, migration of this type takes place primarily into the higher latitudes of the northern hemisphere. No land birds are known to migrate into the higher latitudes of the southern hemisphere. Only species of seabirds migrate to the southern hemisphere to breed. Although most bird migration takes place between the lower and higher latitudes of the northern hemisphere, many species are trans-equatorial living in the northern hemisphere during the breeding season and in the southern hemisphere during the rest of the year. A well-known example of trans-equatorial migration is the Arctic tern. This tern which breeds in the Arctic regions and winters in Antarctic waters, travels 24,000 miles a year during migration. Not all migration is long distance. Some species exhibit altitudinal migration. Their breeding areas are in higher elevations near or at the peaks of mountains while they spend the non-breeding season in neighboring valleys or other nearby low country. This variety of migration is typical of many grouse species, including the ptarmigan, a form of Arctic grouse. Many rock ptarmigan never leave the high Arctic tundra, spending their breeding season atop wind-swept Arctic peaks and the winter season in nearby valleys, enduring some of the coldest conditions on Earth. During migration, most birds fly for a limited period each day, probably about six to eight hours, typically flying distances of several hundred miles. Some birds, however, undertake much longer flights when their routes include crossing large bodies of water or other geographic features such as deserts or mountains. For example, many species regularly cross the Gulf of Mexico, a trip that requires a continuous flight of over 1,000 miles and takes from 24 to 36 hours or longer. An extreme example of non-stop bird migration is done by the bar-tailed godwit, which makes a continuous flight of over 11,000 miles from Alaska to New Zealand each year. At the start of its trip, about 55% of its body weight is made up of the fat necessary to fuel this amazing journey. How birds manage to unerringly travel between distant locations is one aspect that has fascinated observers for centuries. Modern day researchers have attempted to understand this feat. Most studies have found that migratory birds 
all have some ability to navigate and an innate drive to travel in a particular direction. Nocturnal migrants, those species that travel at night, seem to take their navigational cues from the stars. When the stars are obs obscured by clouds, nocturnal migrants become confused and may return to earth or stray, of course. Diurnal migrants, those migrating during the day, take their cues from the location of the sun. In addition, diurnal migrants have also been shown to use geographic features such as mountain ranges or sea coasts as other cues for navigation. Because the stars and the sun move constantly over the course of 24 hours, this suggests that migrating birds also have a sense of time. We have just read a passage about bird migration. Let's move on to a few sample questions based on this passage that we have just read. Do Do the following statements agree with the information in the reading passage. Okay, so uh, this is the question you would be given a few statements. You will have to read them and check if the information is there in the reading passage and you will have to uh, find whether the answers are you know, true or false or if there is no such information given. So the question still goes on like this. Right? True? If the statement agrees with the information falls if the statement contradicts the information and not given if there is no information on this in the passage. So this is the question, introduction of the question that is given to you. This is how you will be having a question. Let's um, go ahead with uh, the sentences. So you are going to be given a few sentences, you will have to check whether they are true, false or not given. If the statement agrees with the information that was given in the passage, 
you go ahead writing true. If it contradicts, you write false. And if there is no such information about that statement in the passage, you write not given. Let's move on to the first statement. Trans equatorial births cross from one hemisphere to the other when they migrate. So, is this statement true or false? Trans-equatorial birds cross from one hemisphere to the other when they migrate. The passage clearly says so, so it is True. Let's move on to the next statement. Many migratory birds breed in the southern hemisphere, true or false. Read the passage and check if many migratory birds breed in the southern hemisphere. The passage clearly says that only sea birds migrate or breed in the southern hemisphere and not land birds. So, this would be false. Let us move on to the next statement. Many birds fail in their migration because they do not have enough body fat to fuel the journey. Many birds fail in their migration because they do not have enough body fat to fuel the journey. So, now we, we need to read the passage once again to check whether the statement is true or false or whether the information is not even there in the passage. The passage clearly says that the body of the bird prepares itself with enough fat to make the fuel of or the to make up for the fuel of for the journey but the passage doesn't have any information about birds failing in their migration so we will have to mention not given we shouldn't get confused because the passage says that the bird gets ready but the passage doesn't speak about the bird failing in its migration so the answer would be not given the next question, 
migrating birds spend the warm months where conditions for breeding are optimal true or false migrating birds spend the warm months but conditions for breeding are optimal so that's a very obvious answer the passage was speaking more again and again about uh, the breeding options for migrating birds so how far they travel for breeding and how far they come back to their place so this is definitely a correct statement so this is my answer true okay so this is one common kind or type of question that is asked in the reading um, exercise or the assessment for reading skills where you are given a passage followed by the passage you will have various kinds of questions one commonly asked question or one question which sends jitters in everybody is this true false or not given question you just need to read the passage very carefully understand comprehend lot of observation is required and then start answering if the statement agrees you go with true if the statement contradicts you go with false and if there is no sufficient information or there is absolutely no information about that particular statement mentioned in the passage then we go with not given the next type of question under the reading passage is going to be this so you would be given descriptions about a few things or about whatever is the topic of discussion in the passage and you will have to match them uh, with the statement or the description that is given for example since our passage is about uh, the migration of birds here we have descriptions of migratory birds and their habits you got to match each type of bird with the correct description so you either write a or b now a are diurnal species of birds and b are nocturnal species of birds so you below or beneath you have four sentences or in fact four descriptions we got to read them and categorize them whether they fall under a diurnal or b nocturnal let's move on to the first sentence or the first description they navigate by looking at the sun diurnal or nocturnal the passage clearly says that nocturnal birds travel with the help of stars which means or that means they travel in the night so obviously that which takes sun as the navigation key is going to be diurnal species so they navigate by looking at the sun who navigates the diurnal birds navigate so that is option a they navigate by looking at the stars we had just discussed nocturnal birds so option b they may stop flying when clouds obscure the sky so diurnal or nocturnal who will stop flying when the clouds obscure the sky it's nothing but nocturnal because their signs are just stars and if the clouds are obscure they will not be able to migrate they navigate by looking at the landforms definitely it's not the nocturnal species of birds but it has to be diurnal because they travel with the help of landforms 
So that brings us to the end of this type of question. So the first set of questions where the true or false are not given questions and this includes the descriptions of the content given and matching them with their type. So here we have given two options, option A for diurnal and option B for nocturnal species of birds and you are given four sentences or four statements of description and you got to match them accordingly. So if you feel the answer is a diurnal species of birds, go for A and if you feel the answer is nocturnal species of birds, you go for B.